how uh, loud you applaud at the end of the, these 20 minutes, which might be a bit different. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Pierre Marc. I'm a malware researcher with antivirus company ESET. Um, our company is based in Europe. We have a big office in San Diego and a fast-growing office in Montreal. I'm going to present today on basic Python for malware analysis. Please focus on the basic part of things. I am uh, far from having the skills that you do. It doesn't work anyway. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So yes, this is very, very basic Python for malware uh, analysis. So uh, I apologize for my lack of skills. Uh, I just hope that you guys can give me a couple of tips on how to improve uh, what we are doing with Python. On a daily basis, uh, the duty of our team in Montreal is to perform an malware analysis. What we want to do is just to understand some malware, understand what it's doing. In this process, we're using Python in different ways for different purposes. The first one of these is to uh, process huge amounts of files. On a daily basis, we receive between 200,000 and 300,000 new files that we've never seen before. Most of them are either HTML or PE files. Uh, Already a question. Uh, yeah, what is uh, malware? <laughs> <laughs> All right, malware is, stands for malicious software, okay. and it's something that is bad for your computer. Uh, most of it is uh, now targeting Windows systems, but we are also seeing malware for other platforms such as uh, Linux, OS X, and all these type of things. Most of what I will be talking about today is focused for Win32 binaries, but uh, a lot of the, the tools you can use for other platforms as well. So I apologize, this presentation is quite short and I won't have time to dig deeply into what malware is, what reverse engineering is, or, ma um, or the tools we are using. I'm going to try to focus on Python. But if you have more questions, uh, I will uh, please feel free to see me after the presentation. I will be glad to answer any of your questions. So we are using Python for batch processing, processing large amount of files. But we are also using it when debugging uh, Windows files, for example, to defeat backers and obfuscation. And finally, also during our static analysis phase, where we want to understand what some piece of code is doing. When we are seeing some malware, the first thing we want to answer is this list of questions. So we are presented with a file. It's usually a Win32 uh, PE file. And I want to go through this checklist as fast as possible without repeating what I have to do, um, keeping the repetition steps to as few as possible. So when we have a new malware, we want to understand how it gets installed in the system. What's the infection vector? How did the system get compromised? Then we want to understand how the malware will persist on the system how it will, for example, uh, change a registry key to make sure that it starts again when the system reboots. We want to find if uh, there is any stealth functionality inside the malware. Is, does this thing install any rootkit? Does it try to hide its file on the hard drive? And all these type of features that we are interested in because they will be important for doing forensic analysis or for detection purposes. But I want to stress out that the team we have in Montreal is not focusing on detection. We are really focusing on malware analysis. We don't want to detect the stuff, we want to understand what it is doing. We want to understand how a malware will communicate on the network, what type of communication it will have. Oh, most malware nowadays will communicate with a command control server, sometimes with encryption. So we want to be able to analyze network traffic and understand what's going on. And finally, we want to find what's the payload of the malware. What was it created for? Is it created to steal information from an infected system? Or is it just created to send spam? A new trend in malware is also paper install, where some guys will simply infect the computer to install more stuff by other people that will pay for this. So this is all I will say about malware, but if you want more information, just let me know afterward. So the first module I use in Python for uh, batch processing is PE file. It was written by Eero Carrera, it's a great module. It allows you to parse a PE file and access all the different fields that are located inside the header. I use a PE file to validate PE files because I can see, for example, all the different sections of the PE file and if the size of these sections, when you add them up, is at least equal or lower to the whole size of the file. So if this size is uh, bigger than the file you have, you might be dealing with corrupted files. A lot of our customers will send us files that are corrupted or that are truncated. You only have half of the file. 
it's not really malicious because you only have half of it. So the Windows loader will not load it in memory and it's not really malicious. So if I get 100,000 files, I want to go through them using P file and just get the ones that are uh, well formed. There was another question here. And another one here. <laughs> right, so P file stands for portable executable. This is the standard executable format for Windows. It's also used for a dynamically loaded library, DLLs. So it's a very standard file format that is being used under Windows. I'm sorry for you guys who don't like Windows, but this is uh, the bulk of what we do. It's like a ELF. Yeah. Exactly, That's or Mac OS under OS X. So basically, this library will allow us to parse uh, a, the PE structure and validate it. So this little code snippet shows that I can try to match some <coughs> signatures inside these files using PEID. Who here has heard about PEID? Oh, yeah, so we have a couple of CISSP groupies here that know about uh, Winter 2 reversing. All right, so that tells me that I can go a bit faster uh, for this one. But PEID is a very common tool that is used by many reverse engineers to identify a packer. I will go a bit into a bit more details about packers a bit later. But using PE file, you can load a signature file from disk and match it onto uh, the different files you are dealing with to know if it is packed and what packer it, is, it uses. If you don't know what a packer is, you can try to see it as Russian dolls. Uh, a packer is a protection layer that you will apply to an executable. This is used very often to protect an executable to make sure that people like Gabriel won't reverse them and understand what's going on. <laughs> well, malware authors often use packers because they don't want us to know what's going on. They don't want us to analyze the file. So the purpose, the first step you have to do if you want to analyze some malicious file is to go through these Russian dolls, these layers, and reach the core, which is the small black thing here. You want to go through all the protection layers and reach the core, which is the original executable that will let you understand how the file works, what the program does, because a malware is just another program you want to analyze. And once you have access to this, then uh, you have more chances of understanding what's going on. The packers uh, will obfuscate code, they will compress it, but they also include lots of different tricks that will make analysis harder. For example, they will try to detect if the file is running inside a debugger. So at least a couple guys here should know what a debugger is. I think it's okay. There's one in Python as well. Um, the debugger I often use is called Immunity Debugger. It was released by a company called Immunity Security. And uh, it's just an enhanced debugger, uh, OD debugger, with a Python interpreter on it. So you can use Python to automate lots of the tasks that you are doing. The stuff that I do all the time, I want to make sure that I don't do them because they are simple. They are easy to understand and you don't need them. I want to focus on the part that is hard, which is to understand what's going on. So for example, many malware will try to check if, it is, uh, if the file is being run under a debugger. And how it does that is that it will check the process environment block, which is just a memory structure used in Windows. And the first field in the PEB, process environment block, is a flag. If the flag is at one, it tells you that the debugger is present. And if there is a zero, it tells you that the debugger is not present. So the malware, before starting, before doing anything, it will say, hmm, am I being debugged? And if so, it will stop. Or it will throw you in some crazy parts that don't make sense. <laughs> so, the, so there's a script that I did not write, but that was written by the guys at Immunity that is called hide debug in Python, that will change different parts of memory to make the executable believe it is not being debugged. And uh, this snippet just shows that one of the first thing it does is to ha alter the memory in the process environment block, change the flag that sh might be at one because the process is being debugged, and change it to zero. What you have to remember of this is simply that this tool exists. It's called iDebug inside Immunity Debugger. And it helps you to automate lots of these basic steps that you would take any time you want to start debugging something. Instead of having to click a couple times, you just run this script when you start your program, and it will help you out. Because that's what I use Python for, automate the basic steps that I'm doing. You can use Python to um, also help you understand code. When we receive a malware, it's an executable, and it's all assembly. We have to understand what's going on. And of course, the guys don't usually ship with comments and strings and these type of things. <laughs> so we have to figure it out by ourselves. 
the first example I have of a quick Python script that I did to help myself understanding uh, a malicious software is for Switzer. Switzer, once you are able to go through the packer and get inside the binary, has a routine that obfuscates its strings. It's using a simple XOR uh, algorithm where it will XOR all the characters inside one string. And uh, the string is never, all the strings in the binary are not decrypted at once. They are only decrypted before they use it. And once the string has been used in the code, they will just remove it from memory. So you cannot just let the software run and at one point have the whole thing decrypted in memory. So I use Py uh, IDA Python. Well, first step is to understand this listing of assembly, where you have this small XOR um, routine and reprogram it in Python so that you can run it inside, uh, inside IDA and it will give you all, all the strings that are located inside the binary. You could do this by hand, but it's quite long and tedious and it's useless. Once you understand the thing once, you just write a couple uh, lines of very bad Python and uh, you save some time. So in this case, in IDA Python, you have a complete interface that lets you play with memory, play with the bytes of the program and modify them. So what my script does is it will go through all the segments of a PE file and then look for all the head. What's called the head is simply the start of some structure in memory. It can be some instruction, but it can also be some data. So what I will do is check if it's not code, because I want to decrypt strings, and then I will validate if it looks like a string, meaning that there's a list of characters. And once I validate that this is a list of characters, I will call my string decode uh, routine, which is a bit lower here. I will share these slides with you guys because I know there's a bit of code and it's probably not the best for you to understand here, but I just want you to get the general idea of how we can automate some of the processes for malware analysis. So the decoding routine is exactly the opposite of what was implemented inside the malware, where we'll just XOR all the characters inside the string with the key that comes hard-coded in the binary. These binary have to be standalone. They come with everything. So most of the time, even if they have crypto, it's quite weak because they need to embed the key that comes with it. So you just have to reverse engineer it and find the key. So what this code will do is de-XOR the string and at the end patch the bytes inside the database for the clean version and also make some comments so that it gets easier for you to read. If you are not familiar with IDA, uh, it's a disassembler that will just uh, show you assembly listings and you can add comments. So when you add a comment to a line, it looks like this. And when you have a call to a function where you have cross-references, it looks like this in blue. The second example I have here is for uh, PeerFry, which is another family of malware. They also have some tricks that makes it harder to understand, where all the strings are also encoded, but they are stored in an array of strings, which is located in a separate area of memory. And instead of referring directly to these strings, they will take a pointer to the beginning of a string array, and then add the offset of the string they want to use, and then use it in the program. So that means that the first thing you are presented with is the left part of this string without the comments. So I wrote a quick script that would help us, or help me, identify areas where a string would be used, and then put a quick comment and a cross-reference so that I can understand what's going on and have a bit more information that will help me understand the malware. You have to remember my, my second slide, where the only thing I want to do here is understand what this thing does, how it gets installed in the system, and uh, what kind of things it might be doing. So for example, here, when we look at the code, we find out that they are using drive infected string. And it's actually uh, some kind of comment inside the binary that says, OK, I just infected a uh, thumb drive. So the, the script that I did for this part is quite similar to the first one you've seen for Switzer. But in this case, instead of looking for strings that are used inside the binary, I'm looking for this series of instructions where you find the pointer to the beginning of the array of strings, and then you add something. So the code is, it, here is, uh, look for through the instruction in the assembly. If it's a push, all right, then look to the previous one. If it's an add, that means that you were shuffling through the list, the array of strings. Then you use this reference, and you make a comment and add a cross-reference to it. So I see all these uh, dead fish eyes, so I will um, <laughs> move away from the, from the assembly, but please feel free to, uh, to come and see me if you have more questions about this. Yes, please. Wow. Uh, one question. I know that you're uh, a specific uh, 
your, your examples are specific to Windows, but uh, not how, 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 how can, what kind of tools do you have uh, to explore these same things in, in other ways? So for example, IDA is not uh, free software, but it is available for OS X, Linux, and Windows. And, it get, and the assembly is actually the same because it's x86 SMB. So these things were found on Windows systems, but they could be found on other systems as well. It's just that at this point in time, there is a lot more malware and a bit more advanced on the Windows platform because up to now, the majority of people that are using Windows, and this is why malware is targeting it. But I mean, two weeks ago, I was analyzing some malware for OS X, and it's the same process. And it's the same thing we want to do. We just want to automate everything we find out to make sure that we don't repeat ourselves. Um, as soon as you see a packer, isn't that an indication that something fishy is going on? Um, I would have thought so, but um, actually it's interesting <coughs> to see that the most advanced packers or software protection are not used in malware. Does anybody know where they can be used uh, in what industry? Java games. 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 Uh, Blizzard doesn't want you to, uh, to crack their games. So uh, many, many software are using software protection. I was surprised to see that even Google at one point was shipping out applications that were packed with some weird packers that were not really custom. So we cannot assume that if something is packed, it is malicious. Although uh, it, it happens. I have four more slides, so we should do okay. <laughs> Another thing we want to do is that once we have reverse engineered some malware, once we have understood how it communicates on the network, for example, by looking at how it interacts and what it's trying to do, well, we can write some quick Python script. This one is using a DPKT to extract some packets from a network capture, DCAPS, and find all the uh, different data streams that are used uh, using uh, HTTP or TCP port 80. And then, if you are able to understand the malware, you can find out that it's using some interesting crypto. In this case, which is Kelihos. It's using uh, Blowfish and then uh, compressing its data using Zlib and then encrypting it using, using Blowfish. So once again, having Python with all these libraries like PY Crypto is very useful because I don't have to re-implement all these uh, uh, algorithms. I just use Python and within half an hour, I have a script that allows me to decrypt network communication. So thank you guys, Python is cool. <laughs> uh, there are many other things that I could not fit into this presentation. Uh, two of them are tools to automate WinDBG, which is another debugger for Windows that is quite popular. Probably the most powerful, but maybe too powerful for me because I'm not really an expert at it. But PYDBG um, X and PYKD are two extensions for WinDBG uh, in Python. And then there's also PYHU, which is some Python interpreter that you can use with HU, which is a very popular uh, hexadecimal uh, editor, X editor. To conclude this very short presentation, uh, malware, malware reverse engineering, or every reverse engineering task, is often very repetitive. You are dealing with small assembly uh, listings, you are dealing with lots of stuff you need to understand, so automating it is quite important, and this is where Python is useful. And, uh, of course, remember who we are working for? So, if you don't want to work in Bratislava, Kosice, Krakow, or Prague, Come to Montreal. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, I guess it's like uh, some sort of triage. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So there is a lot of uh, triage going on, and uh, once we identify something that is either completely new or something that's really breaking our tools, and that happens, well, we will have to go through manual. Okay. Just a quick note: um, there are packers like UPX, uh, which are just simple executable compressors that can actually speed execution time of your application, at least for loading off disk. Uh, and there, there are many excellent, legitimate uses of, of those types of 